So I've gone along and I pruned off the most of the lower branches, not all of them. It just depends on where they're situated and how much they're in my way and what the age of the trees are and stuff like that. I have a few suckers left. I just wanted to show you that real quick. These will grow up off of a root. This one's growing off of a side root right here. And uh, often they'll be right here at the base of the trunk. I always pull them off because usually it'll take a little bit of the base here with it and that's where most of the buds are that would actually grow back and grow another shoot. If you just cut it off you rarely get those off. And this one's growing more classically maybe off the trunk but they do grow off the roots quite a bit especially if the roots get damaged which they do because I'm cultivating and digging around in there. Also if a gopher gets in there and chews off the root see what I mean? Snap those off. This phenomenon here is called burr knot. Here, 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 all this stuff. And that just means it's trying to grow roots out of the trunk. It's undesirable. It's undesirable even in a root stock, although it makes root stocks easier to root. Unfortunately, this is uh, probably the most promising fruit variety I've had yet. Look at that too. It's also a common entry site for borers. So that's another problem with it. it it's got numerous problems. I did a video on it, you can watch that about um, how to take care of it and possibly remove it. On this, it seems pretty bad. As you can see, it's widely scattered all over here. The same promising red-fleshed apple was attacked by voles or gophers that ate the roots. Like this is has, these roots are cut off right here. This main root seems to go down, but I think some of it was chewed. So I didn't really know how much, look how loose it is. I didn't know how much root was left, but it survived the summer. I had to stake it so it wouldn't fall over. Time to take a look at sunburn and borers. So this is the end of the row. That's roughly south, so this gets blasted by the sun. Look how it's also sloped back. That's, that's extra bad, right? And there's not really much cover here. Now, if I paint this, then this is pretty, you know, that, that's a good protection. But so this got sunburned and then borers moved in because borers love sunburned bark and wood. As soon as it happens, they'll get in there. It looks like this was damaged actually a long time ago. This has already started to grow back and callus up around here. But what I'm going to want to do is go around and cut away the sunburn and any dead bark. I'm just going to keep following this. I can see there's a line of dead right here. So everything down here is dead and everything up here is green. Obviously there's enough green on the back that has kept the tree alive. It's probably not going to die as long as I, you know, take care of it from here. It needs to be cleaned up. It's not really good to leave all this dead junk just sitting around like that. And then we'll paint these later. From here back, the whole row is like that where it faces over here west and gets hit by the sun. And a lot of the trees are actually sloped this way. Any tree that's sloped really hard this way in this row get, is sunburned. And most of them have borers as well. And any tree that's sloped this way doesn't have it. And the trees on the end here where there's less, you know, cover are more prone to that or if there just happens to be, you know, no branches on this side. So I, when I pruned these up just now, I left quite a few of the lower branches just to uh, provide some shade for this side of the row. Again, if I keep up on the painting and use a paint that lasts for multiple seasons, that's pretty much prevention for both uh, borers and especially for sunburn. Eventually when the paint starts to crack and open up, the borers might get in between, maybe. That's, you know, that's to be found out yet still. Okay, I just wanted to show you one of these burrows. So right here, there's, I saw a bunch of powdery stuff and I scraped it away. And then you can see I can stick this wire in there. Oh, half an inch. You don't necessarily know if you get them or not. Just, you know, feel around in there and get the thing to go as high as you can. Yeah, okay, so there's also a lot of fungus on here. You can see some white lines and some dark lines. Pretty bad shape. The narrowest piece of bark on here along the back of the tree is about three quarters of an inch wide. But you know what? That's enough. It looks bad. It looks really bad. But remember, I'm not trying to grow a full-size tree here. Uh, all I want to do is if I can grow this out until it fruits a few times, assess the fruit, then all I need is, you know, one live cutting basically. If I can get a live cutting off it and then I can graft it elsewhere and we go from there. If this was a tree I had planted as a permanent tree, yeah, I would definitely replace it because this fungus is going to keep growing in there. It's a mess, you know, it's a total mess. And once again, here we have borer again. 
burnout. So this is another tree with burnout. Not as bad as that other tree I showed you. You know, as far as that goes, if I was doing like a huge breeding program or something, I might just go ahead and call anything that had that kind of serious burnout right out in the first place. But again, my goal is more to assess fruit quality at this point. And we have the voles. So voles are also called meadow mice. They're short, fat rodents. Look at that. I mean, they're literally eating the wood. I know they eat bark, but apparently, you know, they also eat quite a bit of wood. I've seen this before too. You know, native trees just chewed off to nothing, like nubs. Now, more typically, you'll see the bark chewed and maybe some of the roots chewed off. This one is just particularly bad for some reason. It's a small tree and it was kind of a runt anyway. In fact, I think this may be the one that I've been looking at for years thinking I should just pull out, but I kept leaving it. And uh, I wouldn't think that the voles would favor weak trees. I would think they'd favor, like we do, you know, juicy, healthy trees, but who knows. This is maybe a little bit more typical. They'll come and just girdle the tree. This has one strip of live bark there. That will actually help in uh, recovering and repairing this tree. On the back side, it's completely bare. Everything's bare except for this tiny strip of wood. And I'm pretty sure that I killed this particular vole. This is all damaged as well, right here on top of this root. And there's a, quite a few trees like this. First line of defense for voles is weeding, you know, getting this stuff down because they like cover. They're fodder for all kinds of other animals, you know, owls, coyotes, foxes, bobcats, anything that eats meat and can catch them, which is a lot of things. And a lot of birds. So they want cover. They like little runways and tunnels and any kind of cover. If you get rid of the cover and make it, you know, flat and get rid of nearby cover, that's really going to help. So this is the last section that I haven't weeded yet. And then everywhere from here going outward, you know, say 10 or 15 feet cleared of tall weeds, then that's going to really deter them from making that crossing, you know, all the way across that big open area out to here where it's still open. They do live in the ground. Um, sometimes they tend to live in shallow burrows or under things. Like if you leave a board, they'll build a nest right under the board, but kind of dug into the ground rather than just living underground all the time like a gopher does. So any kind of clearing you can do for that sort of stuff, no debris, you know, no boards or anything like that, that really helps a lot. So here's one that was attacked that has a burrow here. That's real common. Um, it's chewed up all down here. And this still has about a, you know, half the bark is left on this backside, but it, down here it may be chewed around. So if it's chewed all the way around, there's a good chance it won't make it. Sometimes they'll hang on for a while, even if it's chewed around, because they get enough nutrients and water just coming through the wood, you know, the pores of the wood to hang on for a little while. They can also be repaired by, if there's any bark down here that's connected to a root, you can graft a bridge. It's called bridge grafting. You stick in a chute here, and then you graft it up here in the top, and it makes a bridge and carries nutrients up there until that actually will just grow fatter and fatter and grow kind of a new thing there. I've never done that, so this will be a good opportunity to try it. I can trap these guys with, usually with a, just a mouse trap baited with apple. They like apples and that usually will get them. Sometimes I get one that seems hard to trap, but very rarely. They're pretty incautious animals. Their survival adaptation is not caution and intelligence as much as it is just reproducing a lot. All right, that's it for today in terms of at least uh, making videos. I still have a lot of the actual work to do, getting in here, uh, taking care of the borers, cataloging the trees that are attacked by voles and which ones might need to be replaced or repaired later in the spring. After that I need to get these trunks painted all the way down to the ground and preferably slightly below the ground with my paint, my tree trunk paint. I got the supplies for that but that's certainly another day in another video. Got a little more weeding to do. Uh, Fertilizing is just gonna go on through the winter whenever I have something or when I finally get some fertilizer. I'll dump that on. For now, I'm just using buckets of pee. I just pee in a bucket, bring it out here, and run it down the rows. Even though the trees aren't growing, they'll take up the nutrients and hold them and, you know, use them in the spring. Urine's a great, uh, fairly balanced fertilizer. It's heavy on nitrogen, but in this situation, that's not so bad. I think, uh, you know, some extra phosphorus would be good. I'll have to buy something for that, some calphos or bat guano or something like that. 
I was offered, uh, generously offered some materials from a national retailer that's in the area for ag supplies. So they have stuff in the warehouse he can give me to contribute to the project. So that was really generous of him. If I can just get over there, it's a, it's a, bit, a bit of a drive and uh, I need to get over there and pick that stuff up. And I do want the soil covered. Um, it, I don't want it beaten and pounded by rain, so I just want at least a light skim of stuff. I might go get some leaves from the forest or something like that. And finally, I'd like to get these guys trellised, and they should have been trellised the first year. I definitely at least, I probably will actually start with the younger trees because they're still trainable, but after next year, they're going to start getting messy like this. So I'll probably start over there, get those trellised, and then hopefully get these trellised as well. Uh, nothing fancy, just pretty crude T-posts, you know, metal T-fence posts. I have kind of a system that I use that uh, it works basically. It works well enough for a, a project like this. And then they're pretty well tucked in. If I can get all of that done, then it's a matter of maintenance. You know, keeping up with the weeding so the voles don't get in there and so the weeds don't take all the resources from the trees. Keeping them watered through the summer, possibly um, doing a crowdfunding campaign or something like that. I just, I've been struggling with that for years, so we'll talk about that later.